What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Exoria. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we were getting a little bit into applied energistics, uh, trying to make some charge surface quartz and turning that into fluix. And we were trying to get to the point where we can make ourselves a magnet. And it was this one right here. So we did the charger. We did the charge surface quartz. And we did the fluix. But we did one recipe, and then we needed more redstone. And I ran out of recording time. <laughs> uh, so since then, I have made uh, eight more redstone right i used one of them to make two more pieces of fluix and now we should be able to make this magnet so the magnet recipe if we go back here is four fluix four redstone and one iron i do believe we have everything ready to go to do such things as that um, i did make myself another chest we've been running out of room here and ideally i'd like to condense everything into like um I guess diamond chests, but I don't really want to make the diamonds just yet. So more gold chests it is until we can get to the point where we can do applied energistics. Uh, anyway, so there's the one iron ingot. We have the fluix and we have redstone. I believe that's everything, right? Yeah. So we should be able to craft that up. So let's do it. Cool. Um, I also made myself a sapphire excavator. We were needing, what was it? The dust, this stuff. The dust pile. Yeah, dust pile plus crashed, crushed magma rack uh, turns into redstone. So I went and I uh, made myself a sapphire excavator. I was looking at the different excavators. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types of them that are available. But I, what I was doing is I was pressing control for advanced info. And if you look towards the bottom where it says metadata, you can see that it says 354. That's the durability that this one has. Uh, the iron one's better, um, gold one is not so good, diamond is really good. But anyway, I was going through all these and looking at the materials we have and how much durability, and the sapphire one has 3,720 durability on it, which I thought was pretty good. We're not using those sapphires for anything, at least not right now. So I decided to make one out of this, which was just eight sapphires and four sticks, nothing too crazy. Um, so yeah, it doesn't seem to mine any faster, but it's got a lot more durability, so we went with it. So yeah, I'm currently sifting through ash block that I collected earlier, and that's all headed over here. And yeah, we got extra dust piles for later so we can make more stuff. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now that that quest is complete, did we end up getting any rewards out of that thing? It seems like we're not getting rewards from any of these quests anymore. It's just kind of like progression, which is fine. Uh, I suppose that's better than getting rewards that <laughs> are like not really rewards anyway. So unlocking that unlock thermal energy, which looks like we are getting into windmills and some other such things. Um, faster processing was one that I kind of wanted to look at. So let's do this one. Uh, I says, I found a material in this planet's core that would allow me to reach higher temperatures for faster processing. This is going to be really good. To get soul sand, I can, for example, use embers processing. The mobs around there should give me... Magma cream. Okay. Uh, the mobs around there. I assume this is talking about in the core. Okay. So let's see what we got over here. I don't remember what we got for mob drops. So we have slime balls. We do not have any blaze powder. And I do recall hearing blaze sounds in the core, but I never saw blaze. Oh, no, 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 no. We did see blaze. I've been shot at a few times. Um, in the core now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, so we need to go there and get ourselves a blaze kills, or at least some blaze rods, right? Um, what's the second part of this? So it wants us to make the melting crucible advanced. What does that cost? Melting crucible advanced. That would be this one. So we do need inferno brick plus refractory casing, a cauldron, which is fine, silver plate's fine. Refractory is more Inferno Brick and then some steel. So we have that. The Inferno Brick is made from Inferno Clay. And that is made with Refractory Clay, Magma Cream, Soul Sand, and Pulverized Obsidian. Okay. So now I see where this quest is headed. All right. So Magma Cream is the thing that we are going to be looking for. I don't know if there's like an easier way for us to get that. Probably could click through these tabs real quick. I assume... There probably is not going to be an easy way for us to get it at this point in the game other than killing blaze mobs. So, wait, what was that? Villager trade. Traveling merchant. 
If we could find a traveling merchant, which I don't think we've seen any in this pack, that would be quite nice. But yeah, I think we are, in fact, going to have to go to the core. Okay. Well, now that we know what our current goal is, uh, our armor is looking pretty bad, isn't it? And then I'm also using slime boots for my feet. Uh, is it worth upgrading to iron armor? It probably would be. We have exactly 24, which would give us a full iron armor set. I cannot remember if the iron armor is the same or better than the tin armor. Iron chest, tin chest. So tin chest plays plus four armor. The iron one is plus six. So the iron one is better. We should probably, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Iron is a little expensive and it takes us a while to process it, but I feel like the upgrade is probably going to be worth it for us. And then do leggings too. I don't know if we're going to do feet. Oh, I made the advancement suit up. Yeah, let's just do this. We'll replace all of our missing armor slots with that. Yeah, you know what? I feel like that should be okay. And then we'll lose, we'll keep the slime boots just in case. Put that away. What else? I guess we don't need the waste stones on us. We definitely don't need the redstone or the extra iron. Uh, we can put that away as well. And I think we are pretty much good to go here. Yeah, I think so. Guess I don't need the excavator either. Cool. All right, so we're gonna head to the core. Hopefully we can find ourselves a blaze somewhere without too much effort to get to it. Mm, looking on the mini map. Yeah, I can see there's blaze. Ooh, rude. Here, I'm gonna hit you with this machine thing. Huh. Uh, I can see there is a blaze over that way on the mini map. And there's also one over this way. Man, we don't really have a good way to get around in this area, do we? Not so much. Yeah, there's a blaze right there. I wonder if there's a way that I can get him to, like, travel towards me a little bit. He seems to want to fly up, and it looks like he's getting caught behind that block right there. I want him to, like, travel forward. Okay, here he goes. I think, maybe. Nope, he's still going to stay over there. Uh, I could slime sling my way over to that side to attack him, but I just don't know if that's a great idea. Hmm. Okay. Well, I tell you guys what, I'm going to take some time here, try and explore around. I might go back to the base and grab some blocks to try and, like, bridge across and stuff to make it easier for me to get to these mobs. I'm not exactly sure the best way of going about this, but we're completely surrounded by, like, this magma stuff, which is not super helpful <laughs> for us trying to get around the core. Anyway, give me a few moments and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I decided to dig up into the core a little bit. So we're higher up now. We were at like Y12 before. Now we are at Y75. And I just saw there were two blaze over here. So let's go see what we can do with these guys. Hopefully we'll get some drops. There's one. Oop, I don't want to be eaten by Gru. Come here, guy. Oh, yeah. All right. So we just got ourselves four blaze rods. That's really cool. Very good. Very good. All right. So that's pretty much all we needed to do here in the core, I am pretty sure. Let's make my way back, see if I can find how to get back. Oh, here's another one. Let's take this guy down. Whoop, grew, grew, grew. Um, okay. <laughs> I wanted to hit him, but I didn't want to fall off the edge to do it. So yeah, I think we're good now. Get rid of the fire. Okay, so we can kind of follow our trail of torches back. I was just exploring around. This place goes up quite high. Um, yeah, you can see there's like fog in the distance over there. So I guess it goes up to like 256 blocks in Y level. Although I'm not entirely sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I just touch something? Um, so yeah, I've been kind of exploring around in all this basalt stuff a little bit higher up. This area isn't the easiest to navigate around, I've been finding, but it's not, like, terrible either. Um, also, the magmified stone, no, the the liquid magma stuff, whatever that is, it's not lava. I uh, tried pouring water on it, see if I could obsidianize it and see if we could get around easier. Turns out, um, that stuff turns into the magma rock, I guess. That's what it's called? Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, let's get down here. I'll show you guys. I can't re I, I can't remember if that's the name of the stuff or not. Magma Rock? Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's see. How do we get down to where I was to play around with that? Uh, you know, I guess we can just 
dump some water right here. That'll be fine. So we dump water down. Yeah, it turns into that stuff. Whatever this is, I don't remember. Let's take a look. This will be a little bit safer for us to get down. Uh, yeah, magma block. That's what it's called. I did not realize that's what it turned into. Uh, we were going uh, here the other day just to mine the stuff, right? Yeah, it turns out that you can just turn all of the uh, basaltic magma into it. Hm. Anyway, uh, let's head back to the base. We should have... Is that everything that we needed? Is that everything? I know we needed the magma slime. So let's do this, and then we'll make one slime ball into it. So that portion is done. The magma cream. Um, I did lose my place here where we were in the quest book, so let's go back one more time. So we need the magma cream, a soul sand, and pulverized obsidian. So we have plenty of pulverized obsidian, and soul sand is the other thing that we are going to need. Now, I said we could do that with embers, but I'm not exactly sure how that is done with embers. So alchemy recipe, this is from soot. So I guess that's not embers. I thought that was embers. I don't know. Anyway, so we need four pieces of sand plus an ash with two different things here. Okay, so this is interesting. I don't know if I've ever done one of these alchemy recipes that has two of them, but I assume it's going to be the same thing. You put in like eight of one for whatever this one is, eight of the other one, and then I'll tell you the difference, and then you subtract that difference from how many uh, ashes you put on the altar thing. Ooh, little lag spike there. Uh, so yeah, we are going to definitely need to make ourselves a new one of these alchemy pedestals, and then we'll have to figure out what the... Um, the thing is that goes on there. Okay. Well, give me a little bit of time here to try and get this all sorted out. I don't know if there's a way that I can tell the name of this. Oh, I click on it. Copper. And this one is silver. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and make those up. Yeah, we've seen that before. You stamp the Ember Shard with the stamper. Yeah. And then you make the thing. Okay. Well, let me do this and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so we should have some things together here. I made another alchemy pedestal. I made both the copper and the silver thing, whatever that's called, aspectus or something. Um, I have eight sand on all four sides and uh, eight of the ash in the middle, so we should be able to do this a few times without having to reset the recipe. I'm pretty sure you're allowed to put multiple in each one of the slots. Anyway, so we need to get the recipe set up properly. So let's go back to this thing. So the copper one says between 8 and 16. So we will put 8 in there, 8 ash. We are going to use the Biomes O Plenty ash this time. So we'll put 8 into that one. Now it says we can put 0 to 8 into this one. So I think we might just go with 0 and see what happens. Hmm. I don't know if we should put 0 or 8 in there. <laughs> we'll go with 0 and see... Uh, what the thing is gonna say. So yeah, we should be pretty much ready to go here. Uh, I think I might need the uh, Tinker Hammer to set the Ember going back to the cannon thing. So let me grab this real quick and we should be able to continue on here. Uh, all right, so this has 380 Ember in it and I think you need like 400 or so in order for that to uh in order for that to fire off so let's see if i put in an ember well let's take it apart and do these little ones i don't want to end up wasting the ember if i put that there this says it's set to on and that's going to the wrong spot yeah so we need to do a shift right click here and a right click there so that should send it to the correct spot when i put ember in again okay so we'll do that so it looks like things are working. The recipe appears to be correct. Okay, so as expected, we have a fail. And the alchemical waste says copper inaccuracy by one, silver inaccuracy by zero. Okay, I did forget that I told you each of the different aspectus, uh, which one you're off by. So that tells us that we need nine ash on our copper. And then the recipe should just work, right? I'm pretty sure that's what that means. All right, so let's try that again. Where are we at? We're at 70 ember on that one. So we'll put one more of those in there. I think that will bring us up to the 400 mark that we need. In fact, we could just leave this lever on and it'll just shoot when it's ready. I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, okay. So we'll do this again, and this time it should work. Yeah, look at that. Oh, we get multiple. You get four soul sand per recipe. Okay, I didn't realize that would happen. Well, that makes me want to potentially do a few more of these just since we have things set up here. So I'll put another ember shard in there, and we will turn this on. Just got to wait for that. Once again, to fill up to the 400, it'll auto fire for us. Where are we at? There it is. Cool. Yeah, and then we'll have a little bit of soul sand. So this isn't so bad. So we just needed the silver aspect that's really just on a pedestal nearby. And that's it. No further ash required. I like it. Okay, well, I tell you what. I'm going to go through all the stuff that's in my inventory here. Uh, try and make a decent amount of the soul sand so we don't have to worry about it for a while. And then we will continue on. Cool. So we ended up with 24 of the soul sand. That's pretty good. And we only did the one fail. Yeah. Very easy for us to get this going. So we did need to pulverize the obsidian in order for us to complete the first portion of this quest. And we've been getting a lot of this stuff just from our sieving that we've been doing. So now the quest is updated for faster processing. We can go back to the quest book, power up, and check out what the other thing wanted us to do. So that's the melting crucible advanced. Can I just, okay, I was like, I, I didn't know if I had to put it in the parentheses. I was like, can I just type in advanced so it only shows that and I don't get confused when I look at the recipe over and over again? So Inferno Brick once again comes from Inferno Clay, which comes from the refractory with this stuff. So that gives us one recipe, that's eight. And we are going to need six plus an additional four more. So we need 12 total. So we have to do two recipes. So let me grab another pulverized obsidian. We are going to have to make another one of our magma creams, which is fine. Uh, let's do, let's see. We have the blaze powder here and then the slime is up there as well. So we'll just go ahead and do one of those and one of those. Cool. So there's the magma creams. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, could we have turned this stuff? The magma block into magma creams? No, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm just making sure that I didn't like derp that up pretty good earlier by not just mining that and turning that directly into the magma cream. All right, so we have the magma cream, we have the pulverized obsidian, we have the soul sand, so now we need the refractory stuff. And we did have some in here from previous. And let's see what else do we need? So inferno clay, we need to do those two recipes. So let's do that real quick. Back to this, this, that, there's 16 of them. We only needed 12 for right now. So we'll get that going, throw that in here. We'll let that cook up and then we should be able to continue on. So we are in fact gonna need a silver plate and then we are gonna need four steel plates. So we can do that pretty easily here. There's that in the silver. Where is it, silver, okay. And then we need our hammer. Okay, so we can just do that right here on the table, or we could melt it down like we've done before in the past, but I find this just to be easier. You don't have to spend clay, you don't have to wait for the thing to warm up, etc., etc. So there is our different plates. So that should be everything. Once we get the refractory clay all smelted into the infernal brick, we should be able to continue on here. All right, guys, so we should be about ready here. We were running out of iron because we do, in fact, need to get ourselves a cauldron <laughs> in order to make this thing. Yeah, so we spent pretty much all of our iron previously on making armor. Yeah, and that served us well, but we definitely need more iron. So I just got done watering our ore berries down below and got a bunch of the iron ones, so we're melting all of that. Hopefully, we'll be able to take this in a little bit and speed this whole process up with our advanced heating crucible uh or what is it called melting crucible okay uh so let us go ahead and click the right thing and make this guy so we need the cauldron so there's that and then we can do this and here is our melting crucible advance uh can reach up to 4000 k okay so the block must be placed in a closed room of at least 50 blocks in interior size and at least 64 exposed concrete so we should have everything together. Uh, so the melting crucible basic, that is this thing up here. Let me go ahead and get rid of that and we'll bust this and we'll replace it with this one. Is that gonna work? So it is gaining temperature. I am curious how much faster this iron is gonna melt. If it melts really fast, that's gonna be super, super awesome. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. So the iron level's right here. So the heat should be able to get up this high and we should be able to process that iron super fast compared to before 
this bar would be all the way at the very end. We'd only be able to go like one or two pixels beyond it. And it was super slow for iron. So yeah, I'm curious once this thing gets up to temperature, how much faster this is going to be. But yeah, we're definitely still running off charcoal here. Uh, eventually, we'll be able to do this off RF, and this will be a lot better as well. So anyway, uh, I guess we got to wait for this thing to heat up and continue on. Um, so while we're doing that, let's go ahead and take a look back at the quest book. So this quest is now complete. Again, no rewards for it, but this will help us out significantly for getting our resources in the future, which is definitely, definitely good. So convenient. I don't know what this is. I figured out another way to transport items, conveyors. I came up with two designs, both needed inserters to move from inventories on the conveyors, but only the cheaper version needs inserters to also insert from conveyors into inventories. Okay, so we have two different types of conveyor belts. I've used this one before from Immersive Engineering. Uh, this one from Magnetic Craft. I'm not sure if I've ever used that before. So let's take a look at a conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. So let's do this one from Magnetic Craft first. So that requires iron rods, iron plates, and a machine block. Machine block requires lead, steel, iron plates, uh, magnets, and all sorts of crazy crafting here. Okay. Well, that's uh, going to be down the rabbit hole as far as stuff goes with that. I uh, think we still had that magnet from before, didn't we? Or did we use that in a recipe? Now I can't remember. Uh, no, it's right here. So we can use that for the conveyor belt, this recipe here, this machine block, I guess making this motor. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get on this. Lots of lead, iron, and copper, and all sorts of things that we're going to have to do to make this conveyor belt that we're probably not going to use. Uh, the other conveyor belt, though, oh, in order to make these, it's that conveyor belt plus a piece of rubber. Great. Okay. Well, anyway, let me get to this. We'll make the one. We'll complete this quest, and then we will move on. Okay. Well, a lot of crafting later. We now have two machine blocks, one of which is going to be turning into 16 conveyors. I didn't realize we were making 16 at a time, so that's a little bit cheaper than I was initially looking at that recipe and thinking about it. But anyway, so there is the conveyor belt. And then we need to take one of those and mix it with a piece of rubber. And then we should be able to get the other conveyor belt type. Yeah, from immersive engineering. Okay, so we now have both of those, which should complete the quest. Or was there another thing that need more? Hold on a second. What else do we need here? I thought that was it. Oh, right. We also need two inserters. Aha. Uh -huh. So inserter. Hopefully that's not super expensive. This machine reminds me of things from like uh, pneumatic craft. It kind of looks like one of those things that goes in the the assembly machine thing, right? I don't know, maybe just me. Well, that's gonna require more iron plates, more iron rods, another motor, which is all of this stuff. Oh boy, okay. Well, I didn't realize that we were gonna need all of this other stuff. Well, that means we have to do some more Certus cores, so some more redstone. I'm gonna have to make more redstone because I think four of it is required. Yeah, four more is required for the magnet itself, and then two of it's required for making the four Fluex. Yeah, we got a little bit of stuff that we're going to have to do here yet. Ah, can we get into some auto crafting now? Because I would really like to get into some auto crafting now. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, we can easily make this stuff as soon as I charge up the Certus Quartz. And I also think I'm going to need my rubber boots once again, which should be right here to provide the charger with a little bit of static electricity power. Where are we at? Okay, yeah, it looks like one happened. We'll put the other one in there, make sure that's like charged up. So it should be able to do it. Okay, and then we got two charged Certus. Toss both of those into here, and we will eventually get ourselves the Fluix. There it is. Cool. So there's the Fluix that we need, and now finally we just need to make some more redstone so we can make that magnet, and the rest of the stuff is fairly simple. The LV wire coils, you do get four of those for this recipe, right? And then one of those directly turns into the copper coil, so that's not so bad. Uh, other than that, it's just going to be making some plates, and we can just use the uh, copper ore berries for this. I do have to make one more iron rod. Actually, no, I think I have an extra iron rod. Okay, well, that's not so bad. Anyway, let me finish up this crafting. Oop, there's two more right here that we need. Let me finish this up and we'll be back. And again, after more crafting, <laughs> we now have these inserters. Oh my goodness. That has taken a while for us to get to this point, guys. Um, so that unlocked nothing further. So we just have these different conveyors. 
we're probably not going to be using the magnetic craft conveyors at all since the uh the ones from immersive engineering just are better and they do what i want them to do yeah anyway uh we could check them out but honestly it's even saying that they're not very good in the quest book so i just don't think it's worth even investigating it but now that we have that done we can move on uh thermal energy this is something that i'm very interested in uh this says i need to switch from electrostatic energy to a passive reliable energy source like thermal energy I need connectors and coils to connect this power to some sort of energy storage. Yes, so this is something that's going to be much better. We're just going to be generating RF all the time. Um, this also, as I was looking along the quest book here, is going to lead to powered smelting and powering the crucible. Yeah, so if we can get these things hooked up so we no longer have to worry about putting charcoal into our smelting operation over here that's gonna be a huge step forward yeah i definitely definitely want to get that going so the first step here is to make the thermo or yeah thermo pile i think that's how you pronounce it and then it wants us to make some other things copper coil which we've already made previously battery block and an electric connector so the thermo pile did not look like it was that expensive it's a machine block four bronze plates and four steel ingots we have all of that except for the bronze plates, but we do have the bronze, so we should just be able to do that real quick. That extra machine block we made earlier, and then four steel. Yeah, we got all that stuff going. So all we gotta do is just smack down these plates real quick, or the ingots into plates, I guess I should say, and then we should be able to craft this new no problem at all. Boom. So if I remember correctly, the thermal pile needs like lava and water. Uh, one on one side and one on the other side in order for this to generate power, I think. Um, did it actually say in here how this worked? Did it say... No, it doesn't say that, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. This is going to give us a magnetic craft guidebook, so I'm sure we'll be able to look this thing up and figure out exactly how that works from the guidebook. So electric connector is the next step that we need to make here, and that is with some basalt some copper and some stone slabs all of which is pretty easy for us to do so there's some basalt some stone slabs and then we needed some copper all right so we have all of that i don't know how many electric connectors we need but it looks like we produce eight with one recipe so that's all we're going to do and then once again going back to the book to the quest we need a battery block so the battery block is made with three small batteries. Okay, so that's some sulfur, lead. We're gonna need 12 lead plates. Do we have enough lead right now? We do. So we just gotta platify that, which you know what, since we gotta do so many of them, I think we're just going to heat this thing up once again, probably only need like six at maximum. Switch this over to a plate mold and we'll put the lead right in there so this heats up quite quickly i melted down one iron ingot into iron rods earlier and it only took like one piece of coal to heat up and like produce all of that and like it was doing it at a rather fast speed um i think previously it took like three charcoal in order to heat up enough to melt lead i can't remember anyway we'll just do it this way so we save on our iron hammer it's only got 60 durability on it i'm tired of wasting resources on that but we could just do it from charcoal and this seems to be relatively or i guess reasonably fast in order to make the plates so moving on from that we needed yeah the 12 plates here we need iron nuggets which we can use the ore berries and copper which we can use ore berries as well and i think we well we definitely have that we don't have enough iron on us but down here we can grab some more all these things are ready just from us doing stuff yeah plenty of iron nuggets ready to go very good so I believe the lead plates should be done by now. Yeah, looks like those are done. We'll take out the extra charcoal. Okay, and are we good to make these batteries? No, we need the sulfur. I think I only needed six, but I grabbed eight. It's fine. That, there's three small batteries and iron plates. And then we need an iron grate machine block. So that's stone wrapped in iron bars. All right, well, that's something we can do. Yeah, iron great machine block. That gives us four of them. It's interesting. I don't think I've ever made one of those before. And then we need five iron plates. Well, 
probably would be better for us to just smack him with the hammer since I let the crucible cool down. Should have thought about that earlier. So that's two, three, four, and five. All right. Do we have everything now to make ourselves the battery block? Looks like it. Very good. Okay, so that should complete that quest. Now, as far as these electric connectors, I'm not exactly sure how these things work. Um, the quest did give us, or it should give us, the book. So let's claim that. Let's take a look at the book real quick. I don't know if I've ever looked at this one before. It does not seem like I have. Electricity, electricity transmission, connecting... To run power lines to and from electric con electrical connectors, machines, and power poles, you need a copper coil item. Shift right click uh, attaches the wire to the first connector. A single right click on the second connector makes a connection. Okay, so that looks like it's very similar to immersive engineering, except we have to do this, the copper coil, instead of this LV wire coil. Okay, so let's try and set some things up here. So if I put this down, thermopile, and then I put the battery block, I don't know, over here. Okay. Uh, can we do this and that? And then shift right click to this one. Yeah, so that's pretty close, pretty much exactly the same as immersive engineering. Very good. All right, so now that we know how that works, uh, we need to look up the thermal pile. How do I go back a page? Okay, so what do we have here? Mechanics, electricity. So this is telling us different voltages. Is there one for like machines? Sluice box, grinder, sieve, wind turbine. Hmm. Is there a way for us to search in this book? I'm not really seeing. So machines, here's... No, this is still telling us the same things. Okay, well, I'm going to have to look through the book real quick and see if I can find it. Okay, well, I remember using these thermo piles before, but I don't remember if I used it for magnetic craft or if there's something similar in immersive engineering. Anyway, um, so I placed that in the ground. I got water on one side, lava on the other. If I right-click on this, you can see that we are generating power. It's telling us the wattage, and this is how many volts we're making. Anyway, so I connected that up to our battery block, and again, you can right-click on there and see that we are, in fact, gaining power yeah, I'm not really sure how all this works. I'm not super familiar with this mod. The book didn't really say anything about the thermal pile, so I just went ahead and did that from previous experience. Um, but yeah, as far as like getting power out of this battery block to power other things, we're going to have to experiment with that because I'm not super familiar with this mod. Uh, so yeah, we'll probably take a look at that next time. Hopefully we'll be able to get like the powered crucible going so we can keep all this going just passively with some kind of a setup like this or maybe a couple of these i don't know but anyway we're gonna go and wrap whoa what was that we're gonna go and wrap the episode up here for today thank you guys for watching remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time thanks for watching guys bye bye